Aqua fans, I'm Steve Jaguera, Solution Architect for Aqua Security, and in this video I get to talk about a new feature in 5.0 called Risk-Based Insights. Now I've been working in application security for quite a long time, we've worked with a lot of application security tooling, and something they all have in common that drives a lot of people kind of batty is their ability to produce a lot of information, a lot of vulnerability data on be it applications or running workloads or images at rest in our registry, but not necessarily being so good at, at helping us sort all of that out and prioritizing it. Now, what's new in 5.0 with risk-based insights is that it allows us to do, in fact, exactly that. It allows us to take all of our vulnerabilities at rest and kind of sift through what we need to do in the very short term so that we can be safe. We can ensure that we're running in a state that is not vulnerable. And it does that by using public, publicly available information like exploits that are weaponized in the wild, breaking down the CBS scoring to see if the attack vector is based on network accessibility, and combining all that together in a very clean interface so that I can reduce my 4,000, 40,000, or 400,000 vulnerabilities into a mere 1% or less of that so I can, I can create an actionable plan to make sure that my environment and my cloud native deployments are in fact safe. So here we go. Okay, I've just logged into Aqua and I've got my standard number of containers running 54 images. I do have 4,657 vulnerabilities. Now that to some of you might even seem small. To some of you, it might seem huge, but if you think of the number of containers I've got running in scanned images, it's a pretty big number. And I'm not sure I've got time as someone who is responsible for vulnerability management to go through all 4,000 in my lifetime, let alone in the time I'm allocated at work. I think there's some Gartner stats out there that suggest that really we only have time for five to 10%. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to my overall vulnerabilities view here. I can also do that on this particular dashboard by clicking straight through. And I'm gonna see that number reinforced up here. 4,657 vulnerabilities. And what's new in 5.0 is this risk-based insights filtering system that sits across the top. And we can see a range of important to important and urgent. It's already nicely filtering on medium to critical, which is great. I can see it's already reduced my load to 3,000 vulnerabilities, but still, I, that's not something I have time for, but it's nice to have that at a glance. I can see the different options here, network attack vector, vulnerabilities with a CVSS network attack vector, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Available exploits in the wild, remote exploits, and eventually exploits in the wild that are in exploitable running workloads. Ah, that's the holy grail. All right, let's go straight to the end. And now we can see that my 4,000 has been reduced to just a little bit over 1%, 62 available workloads that I need to be going through and expecting all these. I've got two pages, relatively handleable. Now, just to get a little bit more perspective, I'm just gonna choose this one here. And we can see the way it's been broken down. We can see this is, this is critical, obviously. It's got a CVSS V3 of 9.8. There is an exploit available and it is in a running workload. I, I'd like a little bit more information on that. So I can get information on it here. I can check out the various CVSS scoring. And I've, got a, I've got a choice between 9.8 and 10, both are bad. I can look at the exploit details and we can see the different references here. Now it looks like there's duplication, but that's because there's multiple exploits available for all of these. And I can, if I want, click through and take another closer look at it if I want. Just by clicking on that exploit, it takes me directly to the information I need so perhaps even bake this into some of my pen testing efforts. So that's pretty good. Additionally, I can see the remediation requirements. That's what I want to do in the order of operations is remediate ideally first, perhaps apply a V-shield if I want to, or I can accept that risk if I have alternative compensating controls. I can see this is the image and I can see where that image is running at the moment in my sock shop namespace, which is bad. Now, you're probably, might, you might be wondering where this information is coming from. So we've already got some insight into the fact that our exploits here are running, and I can click through and I can see those as we just did. But we're talking about the network vector and the CVSS scoring. If you look at the CVSS scoring calculator here, and then we're just picking a particular uh, method, 
we can see that all the different little codes that are included in the CVSS scoring matter. Now this is set up to give me a score of 9.8. The, the elusive 10, I don't even think can be done anymore. But we can see this is what we're talking about right here. This is our network score. So a vulnerability that is exploitable with network access means the vulnerable component is bound to the network stack and the attacker's path is through the OSI layer three. So this is what we're trying to suggest is bad. If you got an outwardly facing web application, having a network attack vector is particularly bad. And we can see that if we look at the score here and we move it down to adjacent network or move it down to local, we can see it certainly affects the score. And if we reduce the impact, of course, we'd see this is how the scoring gets calculated. It's a little bit of fun to go play with the, the common vulnerability scoring system calculator. Okay, so now that I've done that, I've given you a, a quick tour of how you can manage vulnerabilities with risk-based insights in Aqua so that you can really kind of deal with the workloads that have risks at the moment and how you can just simply pop out this panel to get the different possibilities and based on the Gartner workflow of remediation, mitigation, and acceptance of the risk. All right. Okay, a quick recap. That was risk-based insights and vulnerability management with Aqua. I've been working in application security for years in static analysis and IS and software composition analysis. And they're, they've all been great at finding and reporting essential vulnerabilities in assets. And what they've all also had in common is making it very difficult to prioritize, particularly in the cloud native and container space. Now with risk-based insights, very quickly, you can start with your probably unmanageable number of vulnerabilities in the thousands or maybe tens of thousands. And you can just drag that slider. I like to just drag it all the way over to see what is in my running workloads and kind of aggregate the ability to see running workloads with weaponized known exploits out in the wild and of course, reachable via the network. That really is the holy grail. That's the sort of trinity of everything I want to see at a glance. And wow, it reduced my vulnerability management workload down to like around 1%. All right, that was a quick one. I'm Steve Shiguera, a solution architect for Aqua Security. Thanks for watching.